Hey there. Since we're gluten-free, we're already baking different ways than everyone that bakes with gluten. So today, let's change it up even more. I've got the blender today. This is a high-speed one. You should not need a high-speed blender for your recipe, but we're gonna make a gluten-free chocolate cake with the help of our blender. The other thing, in order to keep everything totally upside down, like gluten-free baking can be, we're gonna use some of this to make it. Quinoa. This is gonna be the base of our cake. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe. Let's get a little crazy with this and make a gluten-free chocolate quinoa cake. So the link for the complete recipe will be in the description below along with the ingredients and their amounts. To start off, this recipe said to bake it in a rectangular baking pan that had been greased. It did not state a size, so I'm going to assume it's a 13 by 9. We'll go with that. We'll see what happens. The next step is to turn your oven on to 350 degrees Fahrenheit so the oven's ready when we are. This should not take much time to put together, so let's turn the oven on and keep moving forward. For the quinoa component of our recipe, you're going to need two cups of cooked quinoa that is cold. So I cooked this last night and just put it off to the side in the fridge. I did two thirds of a cup of quinoa to double that amount in water, brought it to a boil, reduced it to a simmer and cooked it for 15 to 20 minutes just until it was tender. I have a little bit of extra quinoa still in the fridge, so you probably could have gone with maybe half a cup of quinoa and cooked it off to get yourself to the two cups, but I wanted to make sure I had enough. So I'm going to put this off to the side for just a moment. Before we get the blender out, I'm going to mix our dry ingredients together so they are ready for us to just add the blender stuff into the bowl. We're going to start with one and a fourth cups of granulated sugar, one cup of cocoa powder for our chocolate, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder or half a tablespoon. Make sure your baking powder is listed as gluten-free as this one is on the back. Baking powder, of course, will help give the cake some rise. We're also gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda Again, that's going to help with the rise of the cake, just at different times. Our last dry ingredient is just half a teaspoon of fine salt. Now let's give everything a whisk to get the lumps out of that cocoa and blend everything together. Okay, I've still got a couple lumps, but I think we'll be okay. I think the cocoa will dissolve as I add everything else to it. The directions do not say to whisk it. I like whisking it because I want everything blended before I even start adding anything. We're gonna move this off to the side and I'm gonna get the blender. So next we're gonna use our blender and get our wet ingredients together. And this is gonna help with the mixing because then we just have to mix it with the dry ingredients. So I do not like the way the recipe states how to add the ingredients to the mixer because it just says put them all in basically. It starts with our quinoa which I don't like because I feel like you're not going to get a good blend, especially if you're using a smaller blender or one that's not as powerful. So I'm going to start by adding my liquids. So I'm going to add four eggs, room temperature so they blend up easily, a third of a cup of milk, whichever kind you use. I don't see why you can't use dairy-free if you needed to, and that's three ounces of milk if you are doing it by measurements like that. I have a stick and a half of butter that I'm going to add. So if you're dairy free, I would try your plant based alternative that you like using. So I melted that down and let's put in, let's do most of it. And then I'm going to add our quinoa. So this is two cups of that cooked quinoa that is cold. I'm just going to put the rest of the butter on top of that. 
Again, guys, this is my preference for the way I'm adding it to the blender, but I do think if there's liquid on the bottom, you're gonna get a better blend and not have to fight with your blender, especially if it's not high speed. Let's put the lid on. Now we're gonna blend it until smooth. So I'm gonna say probably a minute or so. So let's get it blended. Okay, it's been running for about 25, 30 seconds. That's not enough time just yet. I need to scrape it. And as we like to do here sometimes, I also wanna correct one of my mistakes. So let's scrape down the inside that I can see to get it back in the blender. Let's fix our mistake, which is an easy one to fix. I left out an ingredient. Let's add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. So that's going in. Our lid goes back on. Let's finish blending it. So here's our mixture. And I would say you want to blend it for anywhere from four to five minutes, probably, especially if you have a less powerful blender. So it's actually pretty smooth. It looks like cake batter, and it actually smells like vanilla cake batter to me. So when I was blending this, the edges were a little gritty looking because the quinoa hadn't been totally blended. So I just kept working it back into the batter and turning the blender back on and it looks really good now. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with your standard blenders in doing this. It just may take a minute or two longer than it took mine. So let's add this to the dry ingredients and finish making this cake up. All right, I'm gonna add it in. All right, let's get this all stirred in together till it's uniform in color. All right, everything's mixed in nicely, so I'm gonna add one more thing to this. I'm gonna add a half a cup of chocolate chips. You could certainly use up to a cup of them. You could use half a cup of chocolate chips and half a cup of chopped nuts, either pecans or walnuts. Whatever you wanna do, you can leave them out completely. I'm just gonna fold those in. Make sure you are scraping the bottom of the bowl as you're folding to get any dry mix that you missed. Let's get this into our prepared pan. Spread it out evenly in the pan. So it looks like a 13 by nine pan is the size we want for this, in my opinion, at this point. I'm gonna bake this in our 350 degree preheated oven for 40 to 45 minutes until a toothpick comes out of the center clean, just like any other cake. Then I'm gonna cool it off on a wire rack and then I'll cut into it and we'll give it a taste. So let's get this gluten-free chocolate quinoa cake that we use the blender for into the oven. So we are at the 40 minute mark in my oven and the cake has risen some, which is nice. Looks like it started settling a little bit at this point and it's starting to crack a little bit on the top. So I'm gonna test it with a toothpick. I am coming out clean, so I'm gonna consider this done. So I've got it sitting on a wire rack. I'm gonna cool it down completely and we'll taste. So here's our gluten-free blender cake that we made with cooked quinoa. I have to say, it looks pretty good. It baked up and rose, but then it fell down, but it baked level. So if you wanna frost it, it's gonna be super easy to do. I just put a little bit of powdered sugar on the top. It's dark, it's moist. I know some of y'all don't like that word, but it is. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but it looks really, really good. It came out of the pan super easy. Let's give it a taste. That is really good. As I drop it all over the place. I can't tell that we even had quinoa in it. It tastes like a chocolate cake. 
There's no bitterness to it that quinoa can sometimes have. It's smooth. It's got great crumb to it. I think this is definitely a recipe you need to try. Between using the blender to blend it up and just make it super fine, it didn't take any time really to put together. So other than cooking the quinoa ahead of time and having it ready, it's not really a whole lot of work. You're gonna have to clean the blender, but you would be cleaning mixers anyway. So I don't think it's making any extra dishes. And the ingredients are pretty easy to find. You're also not using a lot of quinoa and gluten-free flours can be super expensive. So you're saving on that a little bit. Guys, that's all I have today for this recipe. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you have any recipes that are kind of odd, like this one where it uses something like quinoa and it's gluten-free, leave me those recipes below or what they are and maybe I can find that recipe online. I'd love to give it a try. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.